Hello my dear students, once again welcome to your physics online class. Today we will be studying the fourth chapter of your physics textbook that is the refraction of light at a plane surfaces. So to understand what is the refraction of light, so let us consider few of the cases. So if I have a wall, okay, so what is this? The first case is I consider a wall. So if you make a ray of light incident on a wall, what happens? The ray of light, it neither passes through the wall, it neither reflects back into the air. Okay, so this also does not occur. So the first thing, the wall, it completely absorbs the ray of light. Okay, now consider the second case, when a ray of light is falling on a plane mirror. So when a ray of light falls on a plane mirror, what happens? It is reflected back. Okay, so it is reflected back. Now consider the third case. So this is a now, what is this? This is a glass. Okay, so when a ray of light is made incident on a glass, uh, only a small portion of it is reflected back, but most of it, it passes through the glass lab. Okay, so this is known as refraction. Okay, and in the process of refraction, you will see that the ray of light that emerges on the other side of the glass, it is not in a straight line to the incident ray. Okay, so it has bent. Instead of going in a straight line, it has bent. So, the phenomenon of bending of light when it passes through the transparent refracting medium is known as refraction. So, is that clear? So, what is refraction? The refraction is the bending of light when it passes from one medium to another medium is known as a refraction of light. So, now after you know what is a refraction of light, there are two laws of refraction. Okay, so the first law of refraction, it tells that the incident ray Okay, the refracted ray and the normal ray, all of them, they lies in the same plane. Just like the law of reflection, the first law here also says the same thing. The incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lies in the same plane. Now, the second law is quite different. Suppose if I consider two medium, number one and number two. So, what is this? This is the incident ray. This one is a normal. So now, if this is a air and if this is a water, so what happens? The ray of light will pass into the water, but when it passes into the water, instead of going in a straight line, it will bend towards the normal. Okay. So this is known as the angle of incident I and this one is known as the angle of refraction R. So the second law tells us that the angle of the sign of angle of incidence bears a constant ratio to the sign of angle of refraction. That means sign of I divided by sin of r is always constant okay and this constant is also known as the refractive index which is given by mu so what is this refractive so refractive index is the sign of angle of incident to the sign of angle of refraction and this law is also known as the snell's law okay so, three answers, oh sorry, one answer for the three questions like what is Snell's law, what is the second law of refraction and what is the refractive index. So, the answer is simple. The sin i divided by sin r is the refractive index, the second law of refraction and the Snell's law. So, the next important topic is the bending of light when it passes from rarer to denser, denser to rarer and when both the mediums are optically the same. So before learning that, what is the optical medium? So the mediums can be said as a rarer or denser. Depending on how fast the ray of light travels in it. So the medium in which the ray of light travels faster is the rarer, in which the ray of light travels slower is known as a denser medium. So we consider the three cases. Let us consider one, two and three. Okay, so in the first case, let a ray of light travels from the rarer medium to denser medium. The second one, denser to rarer. And in the third, both the optical mediums are same. If this is one, let this also be one rarer. And this is also the rarer. That means the densities of both the mediums are same. So we draw the incident ray here also, there also and here also. And we know normal, normal and normal. So when a ray of light travels from the rarer medium to the denser medium, instead of going in a straight line, it will always bend towards the normal. 
the second case when a ray of light travels from the denser medium to the rarer medium instead of going in a straight line it will bend away from the normal and the third one is if the densities of both the mediums are same or if the refractive index of both the mediums are same what happens the ray of light will pass without any deviation okay so these three ray diagrams are very necessary from your examination point of view when a ray of light travels from the rarer to denser it will bend towards the normal when it travels from denser to rarer it will bend away from the normal and when the densities of both the mediums are same then the ray of light passes undeviated okay so the question may also come like state conditions when the ray of light does not deviate so the first one is this one when the refractive index of the first medium is equal to the refractive index of the second medium that means the densities of both the mediums are equal the rays of light does not bend and the second case when the ray of light does not bend is even if the density is not same rarer to denser or denser to rarer any of the case so this is a normal so if the incident ray is normal like if the angle of incident is 0 degree okay so then the ray of light will pass without any deviation that means if the incident ray is falling normally on the refracting surface then the ray of light does not deviate okay so you may write the ray of light does not deviate if the angle of incident is zero or if the densities of both the mediums are same that is what is that called the refractive index of both the mediums are same so now comes the question why does the ray of light bend when it passes from one medium to the another medium so the simple answer is very simple the ray of light it bends when it passes from one medium to the another medium because the ray of light does not travel with the same velocity in every medium since the velocity of the light is different in different medium so therefore the ray of light bends when it passes from one medium to another medium now the next important topic in this chapter is to the, draw the ray diagram when a ray of light passes through the rectangular glass slab okay so let us try to draw the diagram so you need to draw a rectangular glass slab so in a examination you'll directly get a question or you'll get a question like complete the ray diagram so you'll draw a rectangular glass slab you'll draw the incident ray okay let a b be the incident ray let this be p q r and s be the rectangular prism so i draw here one normal okay so now we have learned that when a ray of light passes from air to glass that is the rarer to denser the ray of light instead of going in a straight line what happens it will bend towards its base okay so it bends towards the not sorry base it bends towards the normal now at the surface a s r again i draw one another normal so now instead of going in a straight line we have already learned that when a ray of light passes from denser to rarer it will bend away from the normal so as a result the emergent ray is bending away from the normal so ab c and d so what is ab ab is the incident ray bc is the refracted ray and cd is known as the emergent ray so the diagram is very simple so in this part what is one important topic that is known as a lateral lateral displacement okay so this is one of the very important question from this part so what is lateral displacement so now when you extend this incident ray forward okay so i extend it forward and if you compare this emergent ray and the incident ray which is being produced forward you said that the perpendicular distance between these two always remain the same that means these two the emergent ray and the incident ray produced forward they are parallel they are parallel to one another that means the perpendicular distance between these two shall always remains the same so that distance between the emergent ray produced forward or oh sorry the emergent ray and the incident ray produced forward is known as the lateral displacement now there are certain factors on which this lateral displacement depend the first one being the thickness thickness here also in the sense it means the breadth so the greater is the breadth the more will be the lateral displacement so the first factor on which the lateral displacement depend is the thickness of the glass slab the second one it also depends upon the refractive index of the medium that is mu higher is the refractive index the more will be the lateral displacement and the third factor on which it depends is it also depends upon the angle of incident i okay so where is i here is the angle of incident i this is the angle of emergent e 
So, the lateral displacement is directly proportional to all of these three quantities. It's very simple to remember. It is directly proportional to the thickness, directly proportional to the refractive index of the glass, and it is also directly proportional to the angle of incidence. Okay? So, this is the first part of your fourth chapter. That is the refraction of light at a plane surfaces through the triangular glass prism. So, in exam, you will either be asked to draw the complete diagram of the refraction occurring when a ray of light passes through the prism or you will be asked to complete the ray diagram. So, let us try to draw the diagram when a rectangular, when a ray of light passes through the triangular glass prism. So, I draw the prism A, B and C. Okay, so there are how many? There are five plane surfaces in this prism. One, the forward, second, two, and these three sides. Okay, so A, C, and A, B are known as the refracting surface because through it, one of the through one of the side, the ray of light passes, and through other, it emerges. And the side B, C is known as the base. So we draw the incident ray P, Q. I draw one normal here. So, we have already learned that when the ray of light passes from a rarer to denser, it will instead of going in a straight line, what happens? It will bend towards the base. Okay, so it is bending not base, it will bend towards the normal. So, now I draw another normal here. So, now the second case when a ray of light passes from denser to the rarer medium, instead of going in a straight line, it will bend away from the normal that is here. Okay, so P, Q, R, and S. So, just like the glass lab, we have three rays. PQ is the incident, QR is the refracted, and RS is the emergent ray. So, now there are some of the relations that you have to remember in this prism. Okay, so the derivation is not included in the syllabus, but however, you are suggested to remember these expressions. I want So before before writing those relations, let us see give some of the symbols. So let I1 be the angle of incident. So let R1 be the angle of refraction. Let here R2 be the angle of incident in the refracting surface AB. And let I2 be the angle of emergent. So after having given the what we call the symbols to each of the angles and let this angle okay the angle between the two refracting surface is known as the angle of prism which i denote it by a so now after this the first term come is the angle of deviation angle of deviation so now, now, now the angle comes what is the angle of deviation in case of a rectangular glass lab we had lateral displacement here we have angle of deviation so what is angle of deviation we see that the ray of light the pq it wants to travel along the straight line p q and x but since the prism was in its path so the ray of light now is appearing in the side rs that means instead of going in that way now the ray of light is calling coming like emerging in the downward direction that means there is a deviation of light so the angle of deviation is the angle between the emergent ray and produced backward and the incident ray produced forward. So, this angle, you see here, this angle is known as the angle of deviation which is given by the symbol del. So, once again I say the angle of deviation is the angle between the incident ray produced forward and the emergent ray produced backward. Okay? So, now coming to the relation or some of the symbols that uh, some of the expressions you need to remember. So, the first is that angle of deviation del. It is simply is equals to it is I1 plus I2 minus R1 plus R2. So, this is the first expression you must remember in order to carry out some of the problems in your book. Okay, so what is it? It is del is equals to I1 plus I2 minus R1 plus R2. Now, again, the another relation is R1 plus R2 is equals to A, okay, where A is the angle of deviation. So, substituting that value in the above expression, I may also remember this in the form of I A is equals to I1 plus I2 and finally minus A. Okay, so, you can remember it in any form. Okay, so, these are some of the relations that you must remember. Now, another important thing is the angle of deviation, the factors on which the angle of deviation depend. So, the first one is it depends upon the angle of prism, sorry, angle of incident I. 
okay but it depends anomalously not like in the glass lab when the angle of incidence increases the angle of deviation also increases it's not like that it is like initially when the angle of incidence increases the angle of deviation decreases and for the certain value of i we have the minimum angle of deviation okay and on further increasing the angle of deviation starts increasing the second is it also depends upon the wavelength or we can here call the refractive index of the glass higher is the refractive index more will be the angle of deviation it also depends upon some other factor like the temperature t okay so these are some of the factors on which the angle of deviation increases or not increases sorry depends